Here's a common problem. Your team is starting a new project. Front-end developers are starting to work on the user experience, and the back-end developers are starting to work on the database in the back-end. The problem is, the front-end designers have to wait until the back-end developers create some endpoints for them to consume, and they have to wait until the back-end developers have the format of the JSON they're going to be returning pretty much nailed down. In effect, we're saying the front-end team can't do anything until the back-end team is well underway. You could just stagger the development effort, but wouldn't it be better if you could mock the API the backend team is developing? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a node package called JSON Server to simulate a backend complete with a fake database. Then we'll use another package called Faker to generate tens or tens of thousands of test records in seconds. JSON Server is a node package, but there's no reason you can't use it to simulate any backend written in any language. It doesn't have to be JavaScript with Express. You could simulate a Flask or a C-sharp API just as easily, and it all happens in the front-end developer's project. All the back-end team needs to do is to agree to the structure of your data used in your endpoint calls. If you're following along, you're going to need Node version 8.1 or higher and NPM version 5.6 or higher. Let's get started. I'll start by creating a new project. I'm going to use Create React App, but that doesn't matter. This technique will work with vanilla JavaScript or any framework. I'll open up a terminal window. On Mac OS, this is just called Terminal, and on a PC, you could use either Git Bash or PowerShell. I have a folder called Projects in my home folder just for this purpose, so let me CD into that folder. And now that I'm in the right place, I'll type npx create react app faker demo. This will create a folder called Faker Demo and set up a new React app within that folder. It might take a few minutes, so I'll be right back. The app is created. Let's add JSON Server and Faker. I normally install JSON Server globally since I use it in all my front-end projects. npm install dash g JSON Server. Next, let's install Faker as a dev dependency in our app npm install dash dash save dash dev faker. I'm also going to use lodash, which is a library full of useful functions. npm install lodash. Finally, I'll use Axios to query my backend API. npm install Axios. We've got all our dependencies, so I'm ready to switch to an IDE. I'll use Visual Studio Code. So we're in code now. There's two ways to use JSON server. The first way is to just create a JSON file in your project to contain your mock data. This is easy, but the problem with this approach is that you have to type all those records. That's easy if you only want five entries, but what if you want to generate 500 entries? That would take quite a while and probably be fairly error prone. This is where Faker comes in. I need to create a JavaScript file at the top level of my project. I usually call this generate.js. Inside of generate.js, I'll export a single function. Next, I'll import lodash and faker. I'll return an object that contains one property for each endpoint I want to simulate. In my case, I'm simulating a blog application, so I'll name my endpoint blog posts. I'm going to use lodash to execute a function a set number of times. For now, let's start with five. You can increase it later to any practical number you wish. The function passed to lodash returns an object structure. Since we're simulating a database which normally produces primary keys or unique IDs for each record, I'll start my object with an ID property and just set it to n, which is the current iteration. Next, I'll add some more fields. I'll add a category field for my blog post. Let's suppose for our blog, we allow you to post on topics like science, technology, religion, etc. We want our fake data to generate this category for us from a list of possibilities. So I'll use faker.helpers.randomize and pass it a normal JavaScript array containing the possible categories. Faker will randomly pick one for each record it generates. 
If you're wondering how I knew to use faker.helpers.randomize, I promise I'm neither psychic nor omniscient. I simply RTFM'd. The documentation on the project's GitHub page contains a list of all the functions you can use, and it's fairly extensive. Going back to the code, I'll add a post date. I want to make sure the dates are generated not too far in the past, so for this one I'll use faker.date.recent. This generates a random but recent date. Let's add a field for the author's name, one for the author's email address, a subject, and finally some lorem ipsum text for the blog post itself. Now we're ready to run this. Make sure you save your file, then open a terminal. I'll just use the built-in terminal in code. To start the mock server, type json-server-p3001-generate.js. dash generate .js. The p switch sets the port. By default, json server will run on port 3000, which is the same port used by Create React App, so I need the port to be different. The second argument is just your generate script. At this point, we can see JSON server has started successfully, and we can see the endpoints that it's serving. Note the relationship between what we called our object, which was blog post, and the location of the endpoint. If you want this to be a perfect simulation, you should discuss what to call the endpoints and what the structure of the JSON will be with your backend team. Let's see this in action using Postman to view the faked endpoint data. I'll point an HTTP GET request to the endpoint described in the run messages from JSON server. I'll get data back just like I would if there were a real backend there. But wait, there's more. The pattern most widely used in RESTful APIs is to have one endpoint that lists a bunch of records allowing the user to select one. It would be nice to simulate this pattern. As it happens, JSON server provides detail endpoints. You just need to alter your calling route to include an ID. Our data has IDs in it just like it would if the data were stored in a database. So I have a few blog posts in the list. Let's retrieve the data for one record. I'll open a new tab in Postman and I'll copy in the URL for my earlier GET request. Next, I'll modify it so it has an ID on the end. This time, when I request, I get the one record with that ID. That's fine for mocking and testing simple GET requests. How can we simulate inserting, updating, and deleting records? The current best practice is to use HTTP verbs as the basis for your requests. So I'll simulate adding a blog post with a post rather than a GET request. I'll open the new tab, and this time I'll change the verb to post. Next, I'll add some JSON to the post. I guess it shouldn't be a surprise that JSON server accepts JSON data for the post. I don't need to add an ID field. Just like in a real backend, that gets generated by the database, which in this case is an in-memory database used by JSON server. When I post this data, it gets stored just like it would on a real backend. If I switch back to the GET request and run it again, I can see the data I just added with the post. I could also use the HTTP verbs put and delete to update and delete records by supplying an ID. Let's try an update. I'll make a new put request in Postman. I'll be changing the first name of this user to something else. To make this work, I need to add the ID of the record I want to change on the end of the URL. Next, I'll add my JSON data payload with my updated data in the JSON. I'll run the request, and I got back a good status code, meaning it worked. To check, I'll go back over to the GET request and run the detail again. I can see my change is reflected in the data. Let's round out our CRUD work with a delete. I'll make a new delete request in Postman and pass it the URL with the detail on it.
Again, it gives me a successful status. If I switch back to that detail request and run it again, now I'm going to get a 404 error stating the record can't be found. The neat thing here is that the generate script generates new data on every run. So if I stop and rerun it, then pull the list again, I'll get different data, allowing me to test with a broad spectrum of different data values. So now we've got a fake backend working. How do we use it in our front-end project? Let's go back to code. To keep this demo fairly short, I'm just going to make my request in Axios. Create React app has recently switched from generating ES6 class structures to pure functions. Call me old-fashioned, but I like classes better. So let me convert this function into a class. Next, I'll add a constructor and initialize my state. Now I need my data request with Axios. I'm going to use the on component mount lifecycle event for this. Yes, I know this will cause a double render, but I can live with that. At the end of the Axios request, I'll add a promise which updates the state to the retrieved data. Next, I'll display it in the render method using a map to generate markup for each element in the master list of records. Here's my finished file. Let's run this project and view the results. Make sure JSON server is still running. It is, so I'll start my front end with npm start. After a minute or so of transpiling, I'll see the results. And there you have it, a fully functional mock backend. If you want to add more records, just change the value in the loop in the generate.js file and restart the JSON server. We used React, but you could have used any framework or just vanilla JavaScript. You no longer have to wait on the back-end team to get their endpoints working. All you have to do is agree on the names of the routes and the structure of the data. If you'd like the files I created, you can find them on GitHub. The link is in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe for even more coding and operational how-to videos. And be sure to visit us online at maddevskills.com or on Twitter at devskills.